Oh, yes, Mzanzi, officially. Let me welcome you to the Culinary Hotline Bling! Ting, ting, ting! Yes, please. It is official. I'm absolutely pumped for this one. So let's take a delicious journey down memory lane, recreating some of our presenters' favorite childhood dishes. Yes, we're going to start with a comforting oxtail sump and bean soup that we're making, uh, a lot. I think, go to private school and it's something that you're going to absolutely love. We're also doing a delicious egg curry with puff pastry, paratha, and then we end off with a decadent dessert, a peppermint tart. Oh, it's lined up. It's a three-course fiasco, and if you have any current questions, join in on the discussion, send your voice notes to the number and our WhatsApp line, 0634088863. Without further ado, Let's head down memory lane, bro. My apologies. I didn't know it was going to rass like that in the pot while you were busy talking. <laughs> yeah. Disturbing me with this goodness here, bro, but I won't complain. Oxtail. Okay. So, so you started it up, uh, pot's hot, oil's in the pan, yep, and yep. the oxtail has begun. So, so have you started this three days before the meal, right? The one thing, <laughs> here's the thing though, right? You don't actually have to, you can make it the same day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do like making it a couple of days in advance because like a curry, you make it, and then the next day tastes better, mm. and then the next day tastes even better. You get the vibe, yeah, you get the vibe. And so, you know what's the one thing that really stands out for me when you're making oxtail? Obviously, the longer, the lower, the slower kind of a vibe, right? For me, what that means is that it forces you to spend more time with the people that you have at right. your event, at your occasion. And that's why it's nostalgic for me, because I think as family, it's very traditional to not start things on time, because there's so much oh, prep work going oh, on. Yes. There's tasting in between. And I like the fact that it takes long to prepare a meal like this. It forces mm. you to savor the quality ingredients, but also the moment. The moment. And that's where the nostalgia yeah. comes from. And it's also like, it really, dishes like this trigger all your senses. Yeah. Because if you've had a dish like this cooking for four hours in your home, your home, your whole home smells like amazing. <laughs> Loving. I mean, not to knock two minute noodles, it's amazing, it does the job. Yeah. But it's not the same emotion, not the same smell. Like no one walks in, wow. Wait, maybe some, maybe some people do. Maybe some like, people do actually, bro. I know Let us know you that uh, two minute noodle guy, or if go. you're an oxtail uh, ambiance kind of fragrant there, guy when it comes exactly. to cooking in the house. So what I've done <laughs> is I got your oxtail, I seasoned it with salt and pepper. Yes. It draws out. It doesn't draw out moisture. It just actually helps the meat brown better. Okay. So we're going to brown up the meat. And the reason we do that is because you get beefy flavor from the oxide itself when you brown it off. So you don't really have to use so Just using beef what's stock. already there. Just use what's already there. Nice. But the one thing that I do want to talk about is quite weird. Someone asked me, where does oxtail come from? And then a lot of people hopped on the government and they were like, yeah, yeah, where does oxtail come from? Now, it's in the name, but yeah. I totally understand. I totally understand that maybe some people just don't believe that it actually comes from the tail. Are you almost th don't know what you're eating? You just chow meat. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> what kind of meat is this? Ox meat. <laughs> meat. Meat eat. No, not saying that. But it's like, so, ox tail comes from the tail of the cow, uh -huh. right? And the reason the meat is so tender is if you've ever seen cows just chilling, minding their business in the field, they'll be standing there just like, but yeah. the tail will continuously be going. Ah. So that muscles really work. It's, it's, it's got some definition. Okay. So you okay. do need to cook it low and slow to kind of break all that muscle down a bit to make it soft and tender. Because so, there's dense fiber in there. Yeah, obviously coming from yeah. the muscles so you want to work that out. That, that makes working. There we go. Is this why it takes so long to make it century? Absolutely. Oh. So the, the rule is any, any cut yeah. on an animal, yeah. if it does the most work, you know it's going to be a cut that is going to be tougher, that needs to go low and slow to become tender. Okay. That's the rule. But oxtail, Whoa, I, I, I love, makes sense. I love oxtail, and I do judge people that eat oxtail with a knife and fork. Yeah, no, I you do. can't. I've How do you even do that, actually? Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have many food judging when I judge people, but that's one. When people eat oxtail with a, yeah. with a um, knife and fork. And when you go to a restaurant and order an oxtail dish and they've taken it off the bone, Oh, all the joy has been taken out for you, yeah? Sadness. No, <laughs> okay. sucking in the slurping. Come oh. on. No. All right, okay. so, so a recommendation on the oxtail, because this is, I think, what can intimidate people mm -hmm. if they don't feel like they're getting it right. Are there do's and don'ts here? Or is there a way that you could maybe mess this up? Uh, do it too long or too short? Is there anything like that we need to look out for? Too long is not really a thing. There's enough tissue holding the meat onto the bone. Okay. It is just going to be very, very like tender. It might even start falling off, which is perfectly <laughs> fine, right? When it comes yeah. to don'ts, I would say don't try and cheat the system and and try and like speed up the cooking process. Unless you use something like a pressure cooker. Okay, okay, okay that's time, a different game, yeah. Time is the only thing that's going to make this absolutely delicious. 
anything less than the time it's supposed to cook for, you're going to be fighting this thing. <laughs> it is going to hold on for dear life. You're going to get bits in your teeth. It's not going to be enjoyable. It's like so, a sinew sensation. Sinew sensation. So <laughs> I'm going to have to fast forward. But what I do want you to keep in mind, when you are browning your oxtail, I want you to almost take it to the point where you're like, see, this is not it. Not it at all. Not, not no, even close. Okay. I want you to take it quite dark. Okay. All right, all That's right. all flavor. It's not burn. It's all flavor. That's when you start layering in flavors. Okay. So when you go with okay. your mirepoix, which is onions. Yeah. Okay, and ooh, I, w I wonder if you can almost see this. I want to. I have never seen onions so beautifully chopped on the show. What's going onion. on? Look at these onions. That is pretty impressive. Pretty fine. impressive indeed. Fine. I think those were individually cut. Fine dining. Piece by piece. Fine dining experience. We're going to start charging you to watch <laughs> our cooking. Where is... Okay, by the way, there's a new person running. The, I'm yeah. thinking and I'm talking. There's a new, phenomenal, amazing chef running out mm -hmm. to the kitchen. She's a bit shy. Um, but Tiffany, 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 Tiffany where you especially at, after Tiffany. seeing those beautiful, beautiful onions, I feel like we need to... We need to give props to the onions. Okay. And, and, and more than just the onions. Let's get Tiffany up for way. Come and on. Just, just even We've on caught the corner. her off guard here. Just on the corner. She, she, she's going to come after me afterwards. She's going to come after me. Just, just, just wave. Just wave. Hi. So South Africa, if you, if you see our food looking absolutely so amazing, it's because of that. Yes. Woman right there, Tiffany. We, we bow, we we bow Chris, down to our top. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. Okay, so, okay, what I've done is carrot, celery, garlic went yes, in there. already it's in, yeah. It's generally a very easy dish to make, right? The, your, the magic is in the time. Yeah. So we're going to go bay leaves, we're going to go rosemary, mm -hmm. we're going to go tomato paste, and essentially, once everything comes together in the pot, you're good. Then okay. you put the lid on and let it go. We can top it with some water. Ah, what's the sauce? There we go. <laughs> just bump up that umami. Hit it with some water, and you can totally add more water. I like to just kind of get everything mixed into the pot first. Now you're getting that stewy kind of a yes. sensation going on. Yeah. And then lid on. Now here you can either cook it on the stove top or you can put it in the oven, whatever you whatever you prefer. Uh -huh. So I like doing it in the oven because then I kind of forget about it. And 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 if it's not in the oven and it's on the stove top like this, is it a just leave it and let it do its thing, or do yeah. you keep needing to come in and you turn the heat down low? Yeah. If it's a heavy like thick cast iron pot like this or mm -hmm. any pot that's got a thick base, mm -hmm. don't worry about it too much. Just turn your heat down super low, lid on, let it go. Yeah. If it's a thin base one, you might need to give it a bit of a stir so it doesn't catch at the bottom. But again, that's why I prefer oven. But I understand everyone might not have an oven. Yeah, and we all people, have our own ways. Yeah. Yeah, people might not want to put an oven on for four hours. <laughs> yeah. Totally get that. Absolutely. So, or have the option to even keep it on for four hours, there we go. let's be honest. But you know what the best option is? Go light a little fire there. Yes. Put the cast iron pot down, let it just put go. In a boy, keep but can I ask you a question? Yeah. The whole story, today's social media question. Did you answer it already? What's that one dish that you were forced to eat as a kid? Did you answer that? I didn't answer that, no. Do you, so listen to this. This is actually crazy because I think for the best part of forever, I hated cabbage breedy, oh. right? And my dad would love it. And my mom would always make it for him on special occasions or just because he smokes it. And I would just have this smile going to the house no. and I would absolutely hate it. Okay. Weirdly enough now, and, I, and, and for all my like later years after that being a kid, I hated it and hated it and hated it. I literally tried this like the other, the other day this uh -huh. year. Bro, I think I'm getting old or something, but it tasted nice. There was an appreciation. It tasted okay, nice, so bro. What we, about you? So, okay, but before we talk yeah, about yeah, me, yeah. we just met Tiffany, and Tiffany told me one of hers is the cabbage fruit, yeah. and she says, um, trifle. She says if she ever meets a person who invented trifle, she what? says <gasps> she says it's as if the person who invented trifle woke up and just chose violence for the whole world. Oh, they, those were her quotes. And that's an introduction to Z Tiffany. Uh, Zanji is coming for you, Tiffany. Tiffany. Whoa, you shouldn't have come on the screen right now. Um, okay, so mine. I love it. Yo, what is when yours, I was bro? a klimchi, uh -huh. okay, I went a to Holy klimchi. Cross Ghetto, okay? Uh -huh. It was a different Holy Cross. It doesn't it sounds like this. It was pew, pew, pew like that. Okay, anyway, <laughs> the nuns, they used to... The nuns? The Yo, nuns, that's a whole conversation. Oh. They used to soak the vegetables in sugar and cinnamon. So you would get a carrot, it would look like a piece of glass. And the pumpkin, <laughs> like a sweet potato, was just, you could see right through it. Bah, bah. And they used to force us to eat at those nuns. Yo, the nuns. Wow. <laughs> wow. So I can't eat vegetables that have got cinnamon sugar on it or, or any sugar on it that's just been like saturated. I can't. I'm, I'm I sorry can't. I had to go through that, bro. The, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm still dealing with the nuts. <laughs> but it's amazing how we have all these foodie triggers. Yeah, oh. crazy, man, and incredible triggers. But listen, this is what it's all about. This is where we're at. We're diving into nostalgic recipes. You can find this one at expressoshow.com. And we've got so many more coming at you in just a bit. If you have any questions, of course, come through on our WhatsApp line. It's 63 8863 Because the professionals are here to answer all your questions. We got you. Nice stuff, bro. It's my feel-good 
Welcome back, you beauties, to another installment of the Culinary Hotline. Bling! Ding, ding, ding! Oh, with great power comes great responsibility. And Clem is about to take on that responsibility as he takes a trip down memory lane with one of his childhood favourites, an egg curry with puff pastry parata. Now mm. we begin to understand why you are the way you are. I love this, this dish. If this is what you grew up eating, dude, uh, I, I now understand why you're able to push that culinary boat out um, as, as you do so masterfully. Can you curry anything? Anything. Name, name a thing. <laughs> Can you curry a pickle? Yes. Done. Can you carry a steak? Yes. Every day. Can you carry an egg? Watch this. Okay. Hold so, my coffee. <laughs> this is the original curry in a hurry, right? Because okay. it takes half an hour to make. The flavors are absolutely amazing. Plus, you're even making your own homemade puff pastry parata, okay? There we go. And Done. you're getting protein. And you're getting protein. So let's get started on the curry first. So I've got some onions and in the pan. Now I said curry in a hurry. Normally with a curry, you want to cook your onions so they're like super brown, all the natural sugars come out. Okay, you this want to one, caramelize. Yeah, yeah, this one, just until it's translucent and soft. Okay. So into that, we're going to go with some garlic and ginger. Get one of these. Okay. Because, because, because you must. They make you look they cooler. Make, they just they make you look cool. <laughs> but they make your life so much easier. So you get, got some ginger. By the way, I keep all my ginger in the freezer. Ah. Because you buy a big knob, like these little For tree, sure. a mini tree. And then tree. you waste half of it. Exactly. For sure. Keep it in the freezer. So then we're going to go in with the ginger. Uh, we're going to go in with some garlic, all the aromatics. And again, like instead of chopping garlic, just, just get this from Willie's. It makes your life so much easier. Oh, for sure. Garlic, ginger in. We've got some spices. We've got turmeric, we've got garam, garam masala, a little bit of um, ground coriander as well. And everyone's kind of got their favorite curry base that they like, or they've got their, their spice shop that they yeah. go to to craft it. Um, but there is something about the flavor development of this part of the process that makes all the difference. Why is it so important to fry up or to cook off your spices first? So, you can, you also see there's quite like, no, we said quite a lot of oil. Oil carries flavor, flavor, water carries color. So essentially what we're doing is we're not only cooking our onions, we're seasoning the oil and layering flavors over that oil, Let's right? See. So the garlic and ginger, once it gets in there, we want to toast it, it becomes like aromatic in the sense that you can smell, it's not fresh garlic, it's cooked garlic. For okay? sure, those, those oils yeah. in there get released. And actually, garlic has a high sugar content. One of the highest sugar contents is right up there with onion. Yes, Funny that's enough, how your so fingers you... are sticky after working with it. Yeah. There we go. Oh, so you want those enzymes, all of that to be released. Release the flavor. Then go in with your spices. And again, once your spices go in, the next thing has to happen, that has to happen is you have to toast them. It's literally just building flavor on flavor on flavor and seasoning that oil and building like this intense just concentration of flavor in general, yeah. Is this not the joy of a curry? That a curry in a hurry, you joke about that, but to get this level of flavor development so quickly, you, you know, ordinarily you'd be rocking an oxtail stew for however many mm -hmm. hours to get it to that, that kind of flavor development. Yeah, you can just bang it all together and Ex get that, bam! Exactly. The flavor bazooka. It, really, it does come through quite quickly. So in here I've got some green chili and I've got some curry leaves. Now when it comes to curry leaves, I'm not shy. I will add the whole tree. Great. This gives you such amazing flavor. The green chili, I have to split down the middle. If you're not scared of heat, go in with like a finely chopped green chili. We just want the flavor coming through right sure. now. So we're gonna mix that through. And you see what happens, look, look at that oil. That oil's taken on Ooh, all the color of the spices. Wow. So definitely, this is what happens when you start layering and building in flavor. So we're gonna go in with a little bit of water. And you can literally smell the flavor developing. You, you can. You can, can feel it changing. My pores can feel it changing. It's now, incredible. I grew up with this being slightly sweet. Now, I know why, how the sugar made its way into the dish. Obviously, you added some tomato paste, so to kind of that, that acidity, ah, a little bit of sugar went in. To balance it out, okay. But in doing that, it got like a bit of a Cape Malay vibe, which is like slightly sweet, savory foods. So that's in there, so I always add a little bit of sugar to it. Now, eggs, we got egg curry. We need eggs. We need some eggs. Are we gonna, do, is someone gonna throw? Okay, okay, I think it's over there. I think it's over there. Oh, I was hoping someone I was, a was gonna nervous. just. Okay, so I'm gee, gonna... I, don't know if, I don't know if these eggs are boiled, I don't know if they're raw, so I'm going to ask Graham to check for us. And while you're doing that, I'm going to make a homemade parata, which is the easiest thing in the world. Okay, okay. These are, puff pastry. These are uncooked, I'm going to just... Are they uncooked? They are uncooked, are they, they are uncooked. They are uncooked. Are they, are they uncooked. Check it, let's see, let's see. Crack it in there for me, please. Okay. Tiffany's so nervous, she's like, it's my first day on the job, guys. Have I good? It's a raw egg! <laughs> 
<laughs> and just, that... Tiffany just ran out the door. But here's what here's the thing about the eggs. Okay, I'm we've just... got we've got a version that's done already. I want to talk to you about the eggs. Protein, while I'm busy protein, rolling, protein, my friend. While I'm ro rolling some burrata. So okay, puff pastry. You thaw it out naturally. Don't be putting it in the microwave. Nothing. Let it just chill on its Let own. Let it do its thing. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna roll a big sausage, and then we're gonna cut that. And then we are going to toast in the pan. Can you just check the heat on that pan for me quickly? Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's rocking. Um, parata, what does it actually mean? Is so it just the style it's a cousin, of... cousin of a, of a ruti. I'm, oh, I'm offending some people. Okay. But Jen, do you know what it is? It's flaky pastry that once it's been fried, it's sort of separates. Oh. It's lighter. It's delicious. It just, it's a vessel to soak it's up gonna, all I was going to say, it's going to have all those little nooks and crannies to yeah. really take on board the sauce. Exactly. That's its job. So when I grew up, I used to have this with white bread. Oh! white bread just to suck up all that flavor and it works. The more porous the better. But hey? this works. So what you do is after you roll your sausage, you're going to cut a little disc out of it. You're going to stand it cut side down. You're oh, going to dush. Wow, okay? look at that. Then you can see already, once you've dushed, you can really see the layers of pastry that's in there. Just give it a little bit of a flour and you're going to roll these out to the shape that you want. Oh, and, and it literally just goes into the pan. And yeah. when you introduce the heat, obviously those little pockets are going to be kind of... Yes. Um, they're going to start to open up. You're going to get that beautiful flake and that crisp. And, then and that's of course... what you want. How's the seat? How's the seat? We're there. So, is that exactly what you want? And the butter smell is absolutely amazing. Do you want it hotter Do you, for this to cook? Because it's pretty quick, hey? It is pretty quick. And what happens is it's the actual moisture of the butter inside the pastry that gets heated up, turns into steam, puffs up that pastry. So that's what you want. So what heat one we can turn up a little bit. While we're doing this, let me talk to you about the eggs. So... If you want a hard-boiled egg, right, cook it for cook a large egg for 12 minutes. You're going to okay. get a very firm set egg yolk. Okay. And then what you do, what I like doing, I don't prefer my eggs cooked like that in an egg curry. I like my eggs slightly jammy. That's six minutes. For sure. But the one thing that happens when you do hard-boil the egg and you cut it in half and you put it into this curry sauce and stir it through, some of that yolk starts thickening the sauce. Oh, wow. And it becomes... Decadently Even rich. Even more funky, yeah. Even more. So I'm going to double check. I think th these might be six minute eggs. So you're going to boil them until, obviously, to your doneness, shell them, and then put it in the curry sauce. Make sure you're stirring it all through so they're properly coated. The longer it sits in that curry, it's just going to pick up more flavor. It's going to absorb because there is a little bit of a porous nature there. I love that. I'm just thinking the, the yolk for me is slightly yolk. softer. It, it must be. Let's do the test, man. So I, do like the a, test. I like a jammy, like I said. So not, not too runny. But jammy, like it's still got a bit of that denseness inside For the sure. yolk. Let's see. Uh, let's have uh. a look, yeah. So let's see. So Tiffany prefers a hard-boiled egg. So what I say game. Everyone's perfect. allowed their preference. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> it works, whatever. So even if you're someone that does not like a hard-boiled egg, you're going to find that you do in this dish because that yolk just becomes such an amazing element into the actual sauce itself. Oh, I love that. And the added protein. So our, our little puff pastry, our parata is coming along yeah. beautifully. Yeah. Of course, we, we put it to you guys at home. If you have that one meal that you grew up eating that you maybe ate out of fear because your parents just forced <laughs> you to, to eat it. Uh, sorry, Bob, about that one macrobiotic pie that you made me eat and I cried because it was so horrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your, your cooking was great most of the time. Uh, but of course, we put it to you guys at home if there's that meal that you would choose not to have on the menu now. So let's see what you said. And Zinzi weighed in um, saying pumpkin, the green one. I wasn't forced to, to eat it, though. Had no choice. Uh, we were struggling financially. I would come back from school and find it on the table dry and cracked waiting for me. I hate it. I get that, man. I absolutely get that. When you grow up, you realize what you ate out of necessity. Mm. What was your mother, in my case, or your parents making a plan when there were very few plans to be made? And you kind of have a soft spot. You almost force your kids to eat those dishes because exactly. you're like, you must know, you must learn. Which is this dish, by the way. You Think see. about it. It's, it's, meat has been taken out and replaced with eggs as an amazing source of protein. With the least expensive protein, protein. Yeah. yeah. So I totally feel you on that. Completely. I love that. Thank you for your honesty there. Patsy's saying just peanut butter. Yo, I don't know. Peanut butter's time might have come and gone, dude. No! <laughs> What's going saying, on? Hey, after two, uh, after uh, fish paste, I don't trust anything anymore. Uh, Zolan also weighing in saying cabbage. I still don't like it. Even today, I've replaced it with spinach. Fair right. game. Fair game, man. So, gee, oh, look done. at that. Look at that. What happens as soon as it comes out of the pan, beautiful and puffy, you got to be a little aggressive. Don't get, don't, don't get be shocked. Get stuck in. Get stuck gotta in. Got to give it a smash to separate those layers. That's what you do. You serve it with the beautiful egg curry. And if you want the full recipe, do you know where you go and get it? You go and get in the latest issue of Taste Magazine. This oh. is, and it's, this is from my latest feature in this month's story. It's everything eggs. 
Go and check it out. G? Wow. If you thought you knew your eggs, you don't. There, exactly. Until you've carried an egg. I'm sorry. You don't know your eggs. Exquisite. We've got a lot more parata to be making because it's I think exquisite. people are going to be exquisite. exquisite. Hey. Exceptional, my friend. <laughs> uh, now you can't even turn the cheese off. Um, no more cheesy dishes. We're going to round off this nostalgic journey down memory lane, of course, with Zoe's beautiful peppermint crisp tart, which I think is the most South African dessert mm. that ever South African. Um, we are here for the culinary hotline. Bling! Jing, jing, jing! Spectacular today. Mm. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And today we've been recreating some delicious recipes from a hearty home-cooked oxtail samp and bean soup. That's one thing, the samp and bean soup, to a classic egg curry. And we're going to end it off with today's culinary hotline with a delicious treat, the humble peppermint tart. Chef Clem is here to answer any culinary conundrums you might have. So feel free to share those concerns or questions on our WhatsApp line. That number is 63 Chef Clem, I'm very excited because we're making a peppermint crisp tart. Oh, this is your request. This is my request. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stand by. Ah. Okay. Oh, how do you feel? So, so, so I mean, we we we're changing it up slightly. So, uh, we generally would use Oli Whip. Yes. But we're going for cream today. Yes. Cream, and then I see you have the classic. Um, what do you call these chocolates again? Peppermint the, crisp. Peppermint crisp. Do you remember the panic? When it was discontinued for yeah. a while, you couldn't find we it. We didn't know what to do as they a country. We back. were just... They brought it back, that beautiful, that's what you want. You want that beautiful green. And then we also, we did the peppermint crisps and then we did a mint chocolate. Oh, yes. So normal chocolate slab with some mint in it. The mint I flavor. love it. Okay. You actually told me you have a hack. Does your hack happen now? Um, no, not yet. So it gets to the, okay. biscuit, the biscuit layer. Okay, so we're going to, as normal, we're going to go caramel into cream. Uh, you just added cream into caramel. Because I like thinning out the caramel first. That's my little hack. Okay. Whilst you end up fighting with the big ball of caramel and all your soft cream. Um, so by doing this, you just kind of thin it out a little bit. And it just makes it easier to incorporate the caramel into your cream. And that's uh, if you're using a manual whisk. I mean... <laughs> That's the thing I love the about it. The electric whisk The electric whisk is easy. great. <laughs> it, it is great, but this recipe is so easy. I found like just like manual is fine. But there's, there's power in food. I um, was in a roadblock this festive season and I got out of it. How? Because of this recipe. Really? Yeah, Did the traffic cop was like, my wife just, it was literally two days before Christmas. It was like, my wife just made your peppermint tart recipe. Can we get a picture? They can go. Ah! Yes, absolutely. So the power of food. So I love this recipe. Okay. Okay. We're going to mix that through, and then you want to chop up some of the peppermint crisp. Okay, so uh, do, do you guys just chop it up a little bit like that? So we would normally grate it, so you always have uh -huh. like a beautiful... But look how easy it chops. Uh, so I like doing a mixture of the two. Let me, uh, you stay right there. I'm coming right now. I'm not going to move. Where's I'll the stay grater right gone? We'll find it out. I'll actually grab the grater we used earlier. So the grating is quite nice because then you like properly disperse the chocolate mint yes. flavour. But then you keep some of it chunky so there's a bit of texture in there when you're busy eating. So this I is like so much quicker because that was always my job was to grate the chocolate and it would take forever. Yeah, because it's not just you'd one. Also eat pieces. There we go. And then I like when your hands get all like start Melting. melting the chocolate. <laughs> I dig it. Okay, so mix that through. I've also like people have done other variations. People have said they don't like peppermint flavor, so they put like a, a chocolate and then add like caramel. In, just use the caramel in there and just oh, make okay. a caramel tart, which you can totally do. I think it's just very South African to have the the peppermint. The peppermint, yeah. It and is a classic. The green and gold. Coming green, through. gold, deliciousness, but also I feel like if you don't have that mintiness, it's too sweet. You're right. the, the mintiness really balanced this dish out because there's nothing worse than enjoying a dish and it's actually too sweet. You, you can't enjoy more than just a couple of happies. Absolutely. So it's, it is perfectly, it's, it's about the balance. Yes. That looks like a good amount. Okay, cool. So let's get that into the mixture. And it, I think it is true. Like when you make a peppermint tart, a lot of people are like, okay, I'm going to make it and then they eat it like four hours later. The peppermint tart becomes a whole different dish when you let it chill overnight. Yes. Yeah, it's totally, totally different. So when but you make it, do make sure that you give it some time to chill in the fridge. Okay. All right. So normally when we, we do our chocolate, we always have to keep a little bit for yes, the top for the at top. the end. So I'm just quickly cutting that. Per 
perfect. But okay. that's where my little hack that I wanted to share with you yes. comes in. So if you don't have time to make the dish the night before, mm -hmm. you have to do it the morning of and serve it at lunch. So when we do the tray, we're obviously going to line the biscuits. Do you crush your biscuits or do you just line them in layers? I just line them. Okay, we line them in layers. My aunt taught me this trick, my godmom. So she says you just take the biscuits and you just wet the bottom and you put it down and that just gets a bit of mm. moisture into the biscuits. So by the time you serve the tart, that's uh, the that harsh crunchiness is gone, but the the softness that comes right. with the deliciousness of so the it's tart. So a little, a little baptized, boom. A little baptized. And then into the dish. You just wet the bottom, and yeah. then you put it because in. Because I'm also thinking now, there's other things you could dip that in too. Like. Like coffee. True. Like tea. Yes. Like something. Stronger, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That could work. But you only need to dip it into the first layer because that's the layer that doesn't touch cream okay. or any of your mixture because everything else gets poured onto it and then the layers... We are learning. We are learning. Okay, cool. So now going with the first layer yes, of the filling? The first layer. Okay. I love that tip. This is a big dish. It, it, I mean, yes. I like how we've done it over here in the individual portions, but when it does come to, like, even now, Easter or um, Ramadan, when you're serving, making it for a lot of people, the big dish is what's going to happen. You're going to yeah. make a big, big dish. I just feel like it's a big dish for the quantity we have. Oh, that's what you mean. Layers. I get you. I get you. I feel like you need to have more cream in between the biscuit layers. But that's just my personal preference. I, I do agree with you. I think it's quite... I, I don't like... My ratio has got to be 30% to 70%. 30% biscuit, 70% filling yes. in the layers. Yes. I am with you. Okay. So top it off with that's that. That's our finishing. That's our top, top, top. So top, normally top. you would do maybe three layers if uh -huh. you can, depending on how big your dish is. There we go. Okay, cool. It's going to all settle. It's going to hydrate. I mean, the, the, the biscuits, like I said, are going to suck out the moisture from that cream. It's going to come delicious. You gave us that hack at the bottom. Obviously, we like finishing it off with fresh cream on the top again, plus... Your do you sprinkle? do fresh cream at the top? I do. I do do fresh cream on the top. I know some people prefer it like that. Oh, that's how I... But another thing is also, if you do find peppermint tart like a little too sweet for you, that extra layer of just cream on the top, funny story, but it does help cut through the sweetness. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. But I get you. That's amazing. It's so easy to make. It is but easy it, it, to make. It is a recipe that hits time and time again, even though people know how to make it. I think it's just like seeing something nostalgic just happen and they can resonate with it. I think that's why this dish is so popular. It is popular, but it's also, I think every family has tweaked it their way. I yeah. mean, my aunt teaching me how to like dip the biscuits at the bottom. That for me is like a, you have to dip the biscuits before you put it in, because that's the layer that doesn't yes. touch anything. Whereas you like to add the final layer of cream. Some people don't like the peppermint. Others prefer just the caramel. So you really can personalize a classic dish like And this. it looks so beautiful. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's quite a, Hectic portion. That doesn't matter. But you know you what? Have you have to share it. You share it. Two spoons, one cup. Perfect. Eye contact. Yes. Oh. Nice. I oh, love it. Love, love it this too. dish. Okay. So we've got this recipe available for you on our um, Espresso Facebook. In fact, our website, espressoshow.com. I was going to give you WhatsApp numbers and <laughs> Facebook, but it's just head on over to our website. It's really easy. A lot of people always feel like, oh, where do, on the website do I find it? If you go on Facebook or X or Instagram, we always have the picture of the dish there with a link to the recipe. So there's so many ways for you to find and get your hands on a delicious recipe that we cook here on your True story. breakfast show. Chef Clem, thank you very much. Do we have any social media comments? Because I quite liked our Good Morning post this mm. morning. About... Did you say what yours is? No, I haven't. Okay, I what haven't. is it? So the thing my mom always cooked, and for some reason I'm quite grateful I don't really have to eat it, and there's nothing against the dish. Green bean stew. We ate it a lot. I know the way she makes it is delicious, but that's just the one dish I just don't... I think I ate too much of it when I was younger. Yeah. And you had to help chop the green beans. Yes, you did. <laughs> that, the labour that's involved as well. I feel you. I feel you. And again, like Ralph said earlier, as I get older, that's something that I appreciate now. It's getting, I'm still learning to love it. But I, yeah, I totally get you. Oh, well, let's take a look at what you had to say on social media. So we have Tony saying, um, good morning, Espresso peeps. So much love for you. My meal was baked beans and minced chicken and peas in a curry. I wasn't forced to eat. It just always was a meal of the day. Didn't matter which day it was. 
hence the peas and the baked beans. Um, they are not on my grocery list any longer. Isn't oh, it funny how things from your childhood can traumatize food you? Food triggers are <laughs> real. But I want to invite someone in. Mm -hmm. Young G. Yes. Uh, let me, you come in. I'm going to bring you a spoon. Ah, OK. We've got more comments. Can I, can I say what, what uh, Davinia oh, has to say? Yes, she dude. says, something beans. <laughs> Yo, my mom used to make it every week. Do we not have... A, but a forks are fine. You know what? what? I'm just switching things up. I'm going to get you a fork too. Oh, so you got a spoon. There's Where's Raul? Raul, I'm out. I'm out. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Oh, don't be doing it, dude. OK, I'll you give him... You just Give him <laughs> the <fine>. teaspoon. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with this. OK, right. so, it's, so it's, it's done, right? It's really good. Zoe's peppermint tart. Wow. OK. Sure. And guaranteed to get you out of any traffic fines as well. OK, classic. Give it a taste, okay? Okay, oh, I'll, I'll oh, hand one okay. to each of you. Let's hope social media. Well, we're gonna only oh, one. You get Whoa. the other oh. one to go with a minute Ooh. spoon. How do? What is the perfect way to consume Whoa. this? Do we it's go so all the way big, down? You literally struggle to yeah. carry it across. No, no, no. Spoon to the base. It's or quite just nice just if you got multiple little, levels. You don't have to go yeah. all the way. All right, little, let me do camera size. Just so you can get see at least the first three layers. Okay, good luck. There we go. So then you get a little bit of everything. You get a biscuit. I got all of that. Oh, but you got to get some of the topping, dude. You got to scrape some of that in there as well. Don't that on there as well. All right. Under salad. This is a Officially the perfect serve. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's step into memory lane. Ching ching. <laughs> there we go. Mm. Mm. Ooh, where's the yeah. Ooh. Cue music. Where, where's young Raul right now? Yeah. <laughs> Running through yeah. his car case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, my, all my finds have just dissipated. Just gone. Uh, just gone. I feel the weight of the, of the world off my shoulders. This is really nice. It's, like it's fresh, word? if that's even a word you can use for Yeah, dessert. absolutely. Airy, it's not too heavy as well. Well played. But it I can, can punch, guarantee man. you this will taste even better tomorrow. Yeah. Ooh, okay, but is it going to last till tomorrow, though? Yeah. Yes. It's going to last till tomorrow, though. That's <laughs> the question. It's not going to last till the end of the show. So, Mzanzi, you can even make your own batch of this. Head over to ExpressoShow.com <laughs> and you can dive into all these nostalgic memories that we've uh, journeyed through. I think this might be the winner. Ha has a peppermint crisp tart ever lasted the next day? Has yeah. ever... Any, no, that's no, why you have to make a not big, a, a big one. <laughs> make, like, make two recipe. and hide one. Yeah. I think. Make two <laughs> and hide yes. one. Oh, okay. Well, you make it again. late the night before, so that by the next day it no, really, it's still not safe. really got no, it's not safe. <laughs> I reckon while we make sure that this doesn't last longer than a minute, you need to stick around for that minute because we're coming back at you with all the good stuff. There's a really important reason why you need to share your story and you want to stick around for that conversation. It's something to look forward to indeed. Mm -hmm. mm.